Well, check this little guy out. I know you read the video title and it's probably hard to believe a uh, stick welder can actually come in such a tiny little box, huh? And I gotta say, this thing weighs like nothing. Like, what is this, like five or six pounds or something? Pretty crazy. So welcome back DIYers, today we're going to take a look at the Reboot ARC 145. And this is the absolute cheapest stick welder I have ever seen. And you can find it on Amazon for 40 bucks, which that's just insane. It says it's good quality, that's good to know. It has the input listed as 230 volts, but it actually isn't a problem to wire it to 110 or 220, so we're going to find that out, experiment with that a little bit. Made in China, CE and CCC standards. And uh, yeah, doesn't really say much else on the box. So let's get this thing open. Oh, that's nice. It comes already pre-wired with a twist lock plug. Now I actually don't have twist lock on my only 220 outlet that I have right now. So I'm gonna have to rewire this, but I also wanna rewire it for 110, see if it'll actually work on 110. So we'll do that in a minute. Here's our user's manual. Here we have the electrode holder. Take a closer look at that in a minute. The ground clamp. Ah, it comes with uh, one of these stupid little brushes hammer thingies for knocking your slag off. And here we have the tiny little welder itself. Holy cow. Jeez, look how small this thing is. That's incredible. I like the little handle too. This thing is only nine inches long, uh, less than six inches tall. Pretty crazy, and four inches wide. Now we have a little bit more information down here on the bottom. So here it is telling us it'll range from 20 amps at 20 volt up to 145 amps at 25 volt. I'm guessing that's the output. Obviously it wouldn't be the input. And it's showing us the electrode holder here, and I'm guessing this is the unloaded voltage. 62 volts and over here i'm guessing this top number is going to be the duty cycle it says at 145 amps it's got a 30 percent duty cycle and at 79 amps it's got a 100 percent duty cycle so you know i don't know you could probably get away with welding uh eighth inch thick metal at 79 amps maybe maybe not but if you're only running at 79 amps you can run it constantly that's not too bad warning notice remove dust twice a month with compressed air please read the manual carefully before operation the welding machine should be installed, operated, checked, and maintained by professional personnel. Non-essentials do not enter welding area. When the welder is working with AC welding machine, please avoid the output wire of two types welder being connected or the machine would be damaged. The welding operation is possible to hurt you or cause fire, explode, and other accidents. Blah, 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 blah. The manual gives you a good little description of everything that's going on in the faceplate. Gives you a description of some of the stuff it comes with. Now, it didn't come with this adapter, so that kind of stinks, but you know, I can make one or just order one. Reboot ARC 145 welding machine will undergo strict various tests when it leaves the factory to ensure that every welding machine that reaches the user is of high quality. Because our machine has to go through tens of thousands of kilometers of long distance transportation from the factory to the delivery to you, and many times of handling, it is inevitable that some some uncontrollable factors will cause some internal components of the machine to become loose or even damaged during the process. We recommend that you perform a power on inspection as soon as you get the welding machine to ensure that what you will receive is qualified product. Now on the outside of the box and in the advertisement it was saying it was a 230 volt only machine but here it is telling you that you can run it off of 110. Now of course the problem with running it on 110 is it's going to consume twice as many amps out of the wall as it would when you're running 220. And in fact, they even say they recommend a 50 amp circuit when you're supplying it with 110. And <laughs> 50 amp circuits don't exist with 110, at least not to my knowledge. Pretty much everything you're gonna have on 110 is gonna be 15 amp or 20 amp. So that means whenever you're running this thing on 110, you're probably only gonna be able to run like 80 amps, maybe 90, or otherwise you're gonna be popping your breaker. But honestly, I think uh, only 90 amps is all you need for most of welding that you're gonna be doing. It's only when you're getting into more thicker stuff that you need to actually crank this thing all the way up. Now I'm sure you guys are wondering how the heck this thing can be so small. And I wanna show you a quick little size comparison real quick. This right here is a 90 amp wire welder. 
And yeah, sure, there's gonna be some components in the wire welder that take up more room, you know, from about here to here is the wire feed mechanism. But from all the way down here to here is the power supply of the actual welding device. And the big difference between this guy and this guy is that this one is a transformer welder and this is an inverter welder. And what's also kind of interesting is that this one only does AC, it doesn't do DC. This is a DC welder. And really for most of the things you're gonna be welding on, you really want DC power. The AC welding process is good for aluminum, but it really just makes a whole bunch of splatter on steel. And also you'll notice that this thing is pretty darn heavy. That's because it's got a gigantic transformer in there. Transformer machines end up costing a lot more than the inverter machines, simply because you have more heavy components, a lot more copper in this one. But of course at the same time, there's a lot of electronic circuitry in this one that kind of costs a lot as well. Let me get this thing out of the way. Now the way these inverter welders work is really kind of interesting. They take the AC voltage coming out of your mains and they rectify that. And you would think maybe that's the end of it because this thing has DC output, but no. They take that rectified output and send it through an IGBT based converter that takes that DC that they rectified from here and converts it back into AC, but like a high frequency AC, somewhere around 40 kilohertz or so. Then they take that high frequency AC and pass it through a transformer and because it's high frequency frequency it, it doesn't require as big of a transformer as it does for when you're transforming mains power down to low voltage welding power and that's why these things can be so much smaller and maybe we'll take a look at the components here in a little bit but for right now let's uh, take a look at the electrode holder pretty basic guy but i don't really see any problem with that now one problem all of these cheaper stick welders have is that the electrode cables aren't all that long in fact let's see how long this thing is so the cable is just a little bit less than five feet. Now let's check the ground clamp. The ground clamp is a little bit shorter at about three and a half feet. And the power cable measured out to about four and a half feet. And you know, it would be nice if the electrodes were longer and it had a longer power cable. But like I was saying, all of these inexpensive little welding machines are all kind of the same. I looked around a whole bunch on Amazon and I couldn't find any of them that have longer than five or six foot leads. And this ground clamp, I don't see any problems with it, so. All right, well, let's get this thing rewired for 110. Gonna pop the screws out of this plug here. We have screws on the front side too. Now we just remove the screws on each terminal. The wire pops right out and we just pull off this part of the plug. We don't need that. So the green with the yellow stripe is gonna be your ground and these are your two line input. Now we pop open our 110 plug, much the same way. Got to feed the wires through here. All right, there wasn't a whole lot of room to work in there, but I managed to get it in. All right, she's all wired up for 110 now. But like what I was saying earlier, when you have it on 110, you're not gonna be able to turn it up to its full amperage, probably only 80 or 90 or so. So if you can, leave it wired for the 220, or if you need to rewire it for a different 220 plug, that would be fine too. Or hell, you could even wire it up with a dryer plug and run it off your dryer outlet. But let's test this thing on 110 and see what I'll do. If it doesn't work out good, I'll probably wire it up to this one right here because this is the style 220 plug I have. But hey, let's try it out. I'll put it on about 80 amps and uh, we'll see what happens from there. This is one eighth inch uh, flat bar. Already got the grounding clamp connected. Let's see what happens. Well, it might be a no-go with uh, 110. Doesn't really seem like it's making a hot enough uh, arc to actually keep the arc going. All right, I got this thing wired up for 220 again. Let's give it a try this time. Oh, yeah. That was much easier striking the arc this time. Smooth art. I actually kind of like this thing. 
All right, so this thing is not too bad. I actually thought striking the arc was nice and smooth and it held the arc well. I was using a 7018 rod. You know, I really wish it could have worked on 110 because I'd really hoped I could just, you know, throw this thing on an extension cord and stick something together real quick somewhere. But, you know, it worked great after I wired it back to 220. And the only reason why I didn't use the uh, 220 plug that it came with is because I don't have any of these twist lock guys. I have the, uh, what do you call this, uh, 650. That's what I'm already wired up for here, so, you know. But this thing is tiny and light and hey it's only 40 bucks so it's kind of hard to go wrong with that especially if you already have 220. now i do know that there's some other ones that are kind of similar to this that cost a little bit more they're usually in the range of 70 bucks maybe you know more 70 to 100 and supposedly those will run on 110 but you know i don't know if i'm going to try those out or not let me know in the description below if you have one of those and if it actually runs on 110 all right or not but as far as the reboot arc 145 goes i'm going to give it a thumbs up primarily because of the price it's just hard to go wrong and if you want to get one of your own, I'll leave a link for it down in the description below. But you know what? <laughs> I think I kind of want to take it apart and see why the heck it's like so tiny and so small. All right, it's got these little plastic sheets here that cover the circuit board from, you know, the, the flat metal top here. But looking at this guy, it's got these two banks of heat sinks here and you can kind of see the IGBTs there. And if you flip this thing over, you can tell it's got four IGBTs all loaded up in parallel here. And each one of these things is probably like five bucks. It could be a little less, you know, you buy them a volume, but hell, the IGBTs alone are half the cost of this thing. Like how the heck are they even building this? And this other heat sink down here, this is for the rectifiers. You can see some capacitors hiding down there. And of course you got some capacitors here. You no, I don't really know what those are for. These are probably for smoothing out the the AC after it initially gets rectified into DC to then go into the inverter. And of course you have the control board here. This isn't a rotary encoder. I think this is just a resistor. So, and it looks like you have some fine tuning right here too. You know, we might have to revisit this because I wonder if, if I could tune this to actually work on 110 or not. I don't know. Could be something to play around with. We also have some sort of jumper that's bridged right here. That might warrant some more investigation too. But hey, I think this thing is pretty neat. And like I said, pretty good value. So thanks for watching. Hope you found this useful. Hit that subscribe button if you aren't already and give us a thumbs up. It really helps the channel out. See you next time.